this is just a quick video to um, give you just a couple things that I want you to work on. <clears throat> um, we have been talking about um, our how our beliefs are our world and you know our reality and a thought over and over the thoughts that we're thinking they form our beliefs and our thoughts are expressed through our words so if we can start to choose our words and get some control over what is going on in our head then we will start to choose or we already are choosing but we'll start to realize that we are we are the ones choosing what's happening to us and creating it so it's um you know, it's really empowering to do these these things. So the first thing we are going to really dig into is starting to pay attention to what your language is already. Um, we talked about uh, you know finding out what your go-to words are, your um, autopilot you know language, and it's not that those words are necessarily a bad thing. Um, however, we will get into some words that we want to be careful of using. Um, but it is that it just happens. It's just like what we say, you know, we don't even think about it. So we want to start catching ourselves. Just um, that way we are empowered to start choosing. And once we do that, we can really choose what we're saying. And it's, remember, our words are going to be the reflection of our thoughts. So we start to really create some new thoughts, create some new beliefs that serve us and what we really want in our lives. All right. So the first so we talked about that already. So hopefully you guys have already started to pay attention to that and caught yourself saying the same things over and over. Um, you know, like I, I told some of you that, you know, one of my things is um, so, I say so a lot or um, um, or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, does that make sense? Does that make sense? I, I say these same things and it's, I don't even think about saying them. I just do. And when I catch myself saying them, it makes me kind of giggle. I'm like, oh, there I go again. And I realize that I'm just on that autopilot. So I can start to become aware. And remember, being aware is just like shining a light onto the darkness in our life. Because once we we do that, it, um, it can't really survive anymore. We're going to start to whoosh, diminish it. All right? Sounds good, right? So that is our first big thing that we wanted to figure out. Now, since we've been doing this, since we've been talking about, you know, our language some, I want to go into some specific words that we want to be really careful of in our vocabulary. Now, I don't want you to worry about changing anything right away. I just want you to do the same thing you did with your um, go-to phrases. I want you to notice when you're saying this stuff. And if, and if that's hard, like if you um, don't really... If you, if you don't, if you're not paying attention yet, go ahead and notice other people. Um, this is not to judge; this is just make an observation of the words that we all use that could be holding us back. Some of these um, words in our language can really hold us back because remember, they're a reflection of what we're thinking, and what we're thinking is is just a, a reflection of our beliefs, and our beliefs are forming our world around us. So we want to really clean them up, make sure that they are um, words that that will help us and not harm us or keep us stuck because these words can be our stuck words, okay? The first one is that you have to. When we say that we have to do something, it um, it's like, eh, it, it makes us feel like we have to do something or else or or we're not going to be happy and it's only this way and I have to do it because it's just because I have to do it. So if we can change that I have to do it to I choose to do it, then, or if I want a certain outcome, then I'll have to do this particular task. Like, say, if you want to eat breakfast, then you'll have to cook breakfast, right? But if you just wake up and I have to have breakfast, you know, have to have breakfast, we just, that have to, and I'm just using that as an example because I have to have breakfast too. But if we, we just have that pressure, you know, that, that have to, it's like you, um, you know, you're stuck and this is just how it has to be. And that doesn't feel good. We're not those kind of beings. We are these free flowing beings that are bendable and flexible and go with the flow. We don't have to do anything. So this is a good example of, of we talked about that. What's the worst thing that can happen? You know, this is a great place to start to insert that into our practices. Um, if you say, I have to, do this, you know, if you're, have to do something and go ahead and think, well, what's the worst thing that can happen if I don't do this? And of course, you know, there's circumstance or there's consequences to everything. So if it's something like you have to go to work, well, if I don't want to get in trouble or if I want to make money, then yeah, I have to go to work or it just could be I choose to go to work because you're doing it. So then you're not going to feel that pressure. So I just want you to start to pay attention to the, the have to, I have to do this. I have to do that. You have to do this. You have to 
do that. That have to is, um, it, it can be a stuck word. So just start to catch yourself. And you know, I'm not saying that you have to change anything immediately, but just start to be aware of it. And as you become more aware of yourself saying that you have to do something, go ahead and switch that word out with you choose to do it. Because you're still choosing to do it. You don't have to do anything. Like seriously, like even if you feel that you have to do something, what is the worst thing that's going to happen? You know, go ahead and think of that worst case scenario anyway, that you might die or, you know, the, something, you know, the worst thing is, what is, that's it, right? So and we're going to work on alleviating fear from, from that as well, because this is all fear-based, fear of what's going to happen if I don't do something. So we can see that if we are coming from a place of have to, then we're coming from a place of fear, or we're coming from a place of fear of what could happen if I don't do it. Does that make sense? So if I want to go to work, um, if I want to make money, I choose to go to work. If I want to cook dinner, if I want to eat food, then I have to cook dinner. You know, those are the, that's the thing. There's going to be um, an outcome to that, right? If we choose to do it, then that's why we're doing it. So anyway, just start to pay attention to it. It's um, it's a good little um, thing that will help you to shift because once you shift from having to choosing, then you're going to be empowered of more choosing because then you are that person that, that can choose whatever's going on. And that's that's huge. That's what this is all about is you get in control and choosing and making different choices if you're not happy where you are. And if you have to do something, you don't feel like you have a lot of um, wiggle room to do anything because it has to be like this, right? So when we can start to choose, and then voila, we're making some big progress. Now, another one is should. This is a big one for me. I um, Since I've been working on this, I've cut it out some. I do my best, of course, and I'm still working on this all the time. Um, should, it creates that pressure that I was just talking about. It's um, It confirms it's, that, that, that somebody else is telling you what to do or what is best for you. If someone tells you, even if it's just an everyday thing, that's the thing. These words just get wrapped up in our everyday language, and there are a lot of our autopilot words. We don't even know we're saying them. And if we're feeling stuck and we don't know why, we can definitely go to our language and figure out what it is that we're saying and what do we need to clean up. So if I say that you, know, that you should do something, that could create some, some pressure for you. That could make you feel like, I'm telling you, it's my idea, I'm telling you what you need to be doing, what you should be doing. And that doesn't um, feel good. That doesn't feel good. We get resistant. If someone says, if you feel like you should do something, you're already resistant to it because it's like you don't have a choice that you just should do this. And it's just like, oh, you know, it can really keep us stuck. And um, we can change it. So we let's replace it. Let's replace it just like we did with I have to to I choose to. This one's going to be it might be a good idea. It might be a good idea if I take the garbage out. You know, if I don't want garbage in the house, then it might be a good idea for me to take it out. Um, it might be a good idea for me to get out of the bed. It might be a good idea for me to do whatever. It just gives us a small shift, guys. It just gives us that small shift, and that's all of this is about is getting that little shift at a time to where we're going to get into that creative mode, where we're aware of that creative mode, so we're choosing it. Um, so, and so I can change. I should do something to it might be a good idea, or I could. I could, I could do it because that, then it's my choice. It's it's up to me if I want to do whatever it is that I'm talking about doing. Um, so if we're talking on a big scale, you know, whether it's talking about weight loss or money or whatever, go ahead and plug those words in and see where you stand. You know, if I want to, if I, you know, I should be exercising. Okay, so if I should be exercising, or I should be eating better, or I should not be eating this, or I should be working, or I, you know, whatever it is, wherever you are. That remember, if we're in a place of resistance and, and putting so much effort into something, then that's coming, that's it's resistance and it's going against what we want. Even though I know our intention is not to do that, unfortunately, we've created these autopilot habits and these um, phrases and words that are helping to keep us stuck. Does that make sense? That makes sense. <laughs> so think about um, replacing them, catching yourself, and just becoming more aware because that's what it's about everybody is just being more aware of this language and like I said when I said in the beginning and I should have spent a little more time on this to um, you know what listen for what other people say again it's not to offer judgment or to um, um, you know it's just to make an observation just to notice you know because sometimes it's easier to notice things in other people before to notice in ourselves um, but that's part of it too because we get a 
It's a big mirror, right? There they are. They're saying it. We can we can catch it. So just um, start to pay attention. Replace the, that word should with could. I might. Um, it might be a good idea. Just catch yourself. If you're not ready to change the word yet, so be it. You know, that's okay. So sticking with this whole language thing, I have one more little piece here that I want to talk about, and it's the absolutes. Um, the, here's the thing with the absolute. And what I mean is, like, by saying um, all time, every time, always, never, everybody, everyone, nobody. Um, they're just these absolutes. They're just like, <clears throat> this is just how it is. And what happens is it they're usually not 100% true. So if I say everybody does this, you know, chances are not everybody does this, right? So it's not really, it's not fully true. It's not a, um, a believable thing. So with, with our, within our, our soul, our source, our divine energy, that, that thing that we want to connect to, that we are, that we're all part of that, that energy, that true source energy, um, that has all the answers, that, that knows everything and has every solution that tells you what to do. If you can hear it, um, it knows this already, so this doesn't resonate with it. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't flow. It's not on the same um, frequency, and so it's going to create some imbalance within your life. That's where that that resistance, that frustration, that negative energy that we're struggling with. That's. It's kind of like in the middle of that because it's. Um, we're not connecting 100%. We're not. We're still like. Nee, 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 nee. And then once we find that balance. Ah, so that's what we're, that's what, that's what it's about. So if I say I, um, I always exercise, I exercise every single day. I always, I always work out. Okay. I work out a lot. I, you know, I can believe that I can, but what happens if I wake up one day and I don't feel like it or I have an injury or I'm sick or I have something else to do and I, there's just, it's just not going to work out that day for me to exercise. Well, my my source knows, my true soul knows that that's okay because it's not true that I always do that. But what happens is in my mind, I believe that I always do and that's it. I have to, I should because I always do. So if I don't, then I'm going to feel guilty. I'm going to get worried. I'm going to be stressed. I'm going to start freaking out about, you know, what if I gain extra weight or you know, I'm not going to be strong enough for this, or, you know, whatever it, whatever it is, I'm going to create, you know, that resistance to it, and that, that fear is going to come up, and I'm going to, you know, just, that pulls me out of that high vibration, I can't stay up here and feel really good about things if I'm afraid, and I've let myself down, I feel really guilty, that I'm automatically, whoosh, down on this lower thing, so when I drop here, I'm only going to attract things that are here, and unfortunately, what I want in my life is way up here, so I've got to get back up there, so by just being aware of those absolute words, I only use that as an, as an example, it could be about being on time all the time, it could be about um, exercising all the time, always eating good, always going to work, I never miss, um, I, you know, whatever, whatever that you always do, every single time, stop and stop saying that, you know, I almost always work out, or, you know, just about every day I work out, or I usually um, work out every single day. That gives me a little bit of freedom. It gives me a little bit of wiggle room, so if it doesn't go as planned, that I'm okay with that. I can accept that because I don't have this crazy belief in my head saying that it's always like this, no matter what. And if it's not like this, then you're not going to be happy. You're not going to meet your goal. You're not going to get what you want. Got to give it, gotta give yourself a little wiggle room. So hopefully that makes some sense to you. Um, so that's what I want you to do. I want you to start, let's start playing with this language. Let's start digging in a little bit and figure out what we're saying and what we're thinking and what we're feeling and the pressures that we're creating. And um, always remember this, you know, when we're doing these exercises, it's not to show you what you're doing wrong or to say it's wrong or right because I don't really want to do wrong or right. Um, it's whatever works for whoever. Um, I love that. Um, it's you you are where you are because that's where you are and it's what you know and it's where it's where you have been and that it's it, accepting that is huge and not beating yourself up over it it's um, it's okay and and when we recognize where we are we then give ourselves that power to move to another place so this is huge I'm, I'm so glad that we're able to work together and I look forward to the next time. All right. So happy speaking, happy thinking, all that good stuff. I will see you guys next time.